welcome back now listen excuse the bonnet but i am at home and my hair is just in like a little fluffy puff and i said i think i actually like this how this looks more so than my little puff but anyway so i'm usually on max like max is probably the one streaming service i even watch that more than netflix you know netflix has probably more more to choose from but I do watch Max a lot. And so this documentary that I believe came out in December of last year, like a month ago, called Love Has Won. It's about a cult, right? And now before I watched it, it took me a while to watch watch it. I just finished the three-part series this morning. And it took me a while to watch because cults are just, of course, naturally disturbing. It's always disturbing to me how people can let another human being control their mind to the point where they worship them and think they're a reincarnate of of a god and it's it's just it's it's always been kind of uneasy to me it's it's like it's fascinating in a sense where i want to learn more about it but it's just especially when there's children involved when people take their children and children do not have a voice they don't have a say so and they bring them to these so anyways i had never heard of this before this at least i don't remember but anyway so love has won is the name of the cult and the mother uh the lady who's a charge of it called mother mother god right it starts off with her corpse she pretty much died from various causes right um they kept her course for her course wow her corpse for like i don't know how many weeks or months how someone can deal with the smell of that i have no clue maybe didn't bother them but anyway so to backtrack of course like with most cult cult leaders they come from a regular background uh she grew up you know i mean nothing spectacular but she had a little abuse going on um, with her. I think they said her stepmother. So I don't know if that that trauma kind of everybody processes trauma differently, and sometimes it can manifest into something else. So she ends up she was on track to being she was a McDonald's uh, manager, and I guess she you know I'll come back to that. One thing that cult leaders do have is charisma. You have to have a certain charisma to have people to follow you. So if she would have taken that, she could have probably owned a few franchises and still be alive, but she decides to just go off and in her mind, she's mother God. And she, of course, through, uh, with the help of the internet, she's got these followers and they live on this little compound, I'm gonna call it a compound. Something that, I have seen with cults is they use sexual abuse, starvation, often. I have not seen a cult that doesn't use at least one or if not both of those to control people. I think the sexual abuse is to control them out of shame and I think uh, the starvation, you know, if I have never been in starvation, right? But I can only imagine if you haven't eaten in like two days, you can only go so long without water. So let's say you have had water or food in like three days. Your sole purpose on earth at that moment is to eat something. So that is used as a control mechanism. You know, we saw that with the Holocaust. Um, I read when I was learning about the Holocaust, uh, I read that the um, Nazi soldiers found out how many calories it took to do a task and they would feed them less than that. So it's a control tactic because you're not going to be thinking about trying to escape if you're starving. You're going to be thinking about trying to feed yourself. So the tactic she used in her uh cult was starvation for the most part they ate but very minimal and sleep deprivation and everybody was drugged and drugged up high drunk most of the time 
uh, while watching this, it reminded me of, and I haven't watched this uh, show in a long time. I, I used to really be on it, but it reminded me of a Tyler Perry show, Ruthless. There was a lot of similarities. Like, for example, this mother god, she would have father gods, which were men that she would, you know, sleep with. And they would have that role of like her secondhand man. Uh, and in Ruthless, it was like that, too. Like he had, you know, um, different men that he messed with and he was controlling the people with drugs. And, you know, it's really sad because. People that get into these cults usually are lacking something. Either they're searching for something. Uh, there's uh, when I was watching this program, I noticed that there were a few people there. People there that came from privileged backgrounds, and I can imagine if you have a lifestyle where you can get anything that you want, you probably get bored after a while, and you're seeking some kind of adventure. You know, this is just what I assume. This is what I've seen um, a few different instances. So it it broke my heart because for one, she left her children, but like I was reading earlier, I think it was probably good that she did leave them. Sometimes abandoning your kids is a good thing. If you know, if you are living a reckless, crazy, unhealthy, dangerous lifestyle, yeah, they don't need to be a part of that. So I actually think, you know, it's it's like better at two evils. It is evil to abandon your kids, but I think it's even more evil to have them in that crap. So I'm glad they didn't. But some people came to the compound with their kids. Uh, this one lady said her mother came and picked her children up and they were living with her. And kudos to that mom, because like I said, as an adult, even though I do feel for the followers in this cult, as an adult, you make your own decisions, but children don't get to. And it's just sad when I hear about people saying they grew up in a cult since birth because they don't have any, they don't have a choice. And that's the only life they know. Like, that is scary. So this three-part series, it pretty much, of course, goes back and forth with her upbringing and then mainly the cult, how the cult moves. Um she was like I said everybody was pretty much drunk and high and she had a drinking problem really bad and she pretty much died from they said a mixture of anorexia which is something she suffered with a little bit before uh, starting the cult uh, her mother did a interview saying that she did have eating issues because she was a little chubbier earlier on um, so she died of a mixture of anorexia, liver failure from the alcohol, and she was drinking, I can't pronounce this word, but something, something silver. You drink enough of it, it will turn your skin blue permanently. The first time I saw this was on, I forgot what TV show it was on, but it was a man and he was blue like a smurf, right? Um, but she was drinking like a half gallon to, you know, of this stuff every day because she was trying to heal herself I, I I'll say this I believe in holistic healing but I also feel like we do have drugs pharmaceuticals too I think there there needs to be a balance like if you damn near dead you need to go to the hospital man like drinking tea is not gonna help that that's just that's just my experience on that. Some things, you know, if I have a mild headache, I might drink some ginger tea. But if, you know, something's popping and cracking and you get what I'm saying? So they knew she was on her way to death, but they actually believed that a spacecraft was going to come and pick her body up and spirit. Um, she ended up dying and you know nothing ever came and they had her body for i forgot how long it was like i know it was some weeks because by the time the police came and the police were actually called by the guy that was in charge of the finances and he totally he look when mother god died he took all their money and dipped because they were getting their money pretty much they were selling stuff like candles and potions but they were also doing like a lot of gofundmes and things like that he took like a little under half a million and left and like someone mentioned online unlike everybody else 
he wasn't emaciated looking. He was of a healthy weight. So I, I think he, for whatever reasons, he was able to eat, uh, drink, sleep, and he handled the money. Maybe she just, as long as he handled the money, maybe he was allowed to do whatever he wanted to. Um, so, you know, during the, the uh, documentary, they interview her relatives, friends, and her mother, who actually, in it looks younger than her when her daughter died. Um, she was, her and her sister, her mother and her sister went on a Dr. Phil show because they were wanting Dr. Phil to get her some help. And that did not happen. But um, I did not see the episode. I just saw the clips on it on the thing. And I, I try to be empathetic, right? I just can't see someone having so much control over my mind to the point where I'm willing to leave everything. I'm worshiping them. I'm willing to have, you know, people are willing to have their children get abused, uh, hurt because they're thinking that, well, this is the Messiah. This is the second coming of Christ. This is a reincarnation of whoever. It was really sad. One of the things that tripped me out, just to get a little light, a little lighthearted on this, um, you know, Robin Williams, the actor, the comedian that com- committed suicide, Fern Gully, Mrs. Doubtfire, right? He was like an angel for them. They like kind of worshiped him too, along with Marilyn Monroe. I thought that was trippy. And you know what's so crazy is she still has people that were a part of the group that are still spreading this message out. You know, they were being interviewed as well, everybody else that was in the cult. Um, And they were just, they still believe it. They're, They're still under this spell. And it's just amazing. Like you have to make sure you are strong minded, strong willed. You can't let somebody take over. They take over your mind. They could take it anything else. Somebody takes your mind. They can have your body. They can have your home. They can have whatever else in your life. You have to have a strong mental foundation. I say it all the time. Work on yourself. If you see yourself being easy influenced, if that's something that's always kind of been your thing to easily follow people, work on yourself. I'm just saying, because that story was really sad. I'm going to be honest. When I, when I finished watching it, I went to sleep, and I had nightmares afterwards. Not like waking up sweating, but waking up like, oh, my God, what the hell? Like, it was scary. And to know that this stuff still goes on, you still have this stuff you have in churches, regular churches, that you see. My thing's starting to fall off, Lord. So, whew, but anyway, if you want to watch that, it is on Max. It's called Love Has Won, uh, The Cult of Mother God. All right, so, you know, if you happen to watch it, drop down in the comments and let me know what you think. I really want to discuss some stuff. Like, these things that I watch, I want to discuss it with y'all, all right? As always, shout out to my subscribers. I think I have, like, 47, 48 now. Shout out to the viewers. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost nothing. don't take nothing but a quarter of a second, if that long, all right? As always, peace and blessings. Until next time, y'all.